This time in the Prop Master, we finish working on this central portion of the left van brace. And of course, you get to listen to my latest excuse as to why this video is so late getting out. It's not my fault. That's right, it wasn't my fault, it was this guy's fault. Um, the hard drive on my iMac died, and it took a week to get a new one in uh, for my ancient iMac. Um, but the good news is it's, you know, there is a new one in there now, and everything's up and running great. Also, I finally got my Patreon account going, so if you're interested in having a say in future projects, or something as simple as just having your name up in a credits page at the end of the video or sometime in the video, um, maybe uh, a shout out in the video. Um, you know, take a look at my Patreon account. Uh, if you just want to donate some money, that's fine too. Um, any money that you can help out with um, will get you some perks and maybe get uh, help me to, to upgrade my equipment so we don't have these long pauses in between videos. But, uh, you know, we've waited enough time already, so let's get to work. If you notice on the prototype piece here, this is all nice and curvy, um, whereas this, not so much. And I've honestly been putting off this section because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do it. I mean, I knew how I could do it, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it so that you would be able to understand what I did and reproduce it. But I think I've got it figured out. So I've created new two new yeah, I've created two new parts of the uh, template. This is a right trim cover and this is the right side cover. Notice that this is made of two thicknesses or uh, basically a half inch thick. The issue is that when I actually set this on top of here, it doesn't quite match up. <laughs> and part of this is because of the way I put this together um, and dealing with the back end, I was kind of uh, fairly loose when I did it. I've since I've asked, yeah, since then I've added on this uh, second deck a line that runs across here as well as the center line so on the template there's a line that runs across here and that's where you're going to line up everything when you're putting this together so you'll go ahead and line everything up to the back and then add this front part flush with that you know just push this up against that part and wherever this ends here will be where it's supposed to end Um, unfortunately, that still leaves me with this piece here. Now, also, I think when I was, you notice we're, we're fine from here to here, but from this is where we have our issue right here. And I think it's because I just, when I did this, I had these two pieces too close together. So um, I'll go ahead and extend this on the template so that it will hopefully fit uh, flush with the end here. But if yours doesn't, because this can definitely fluctuate when you actually put it together. Um, let's go ahead and work on how to make this fit. Um, in this case, my piece is too short, so I'm basically just gonna cut it right here where this angle meets this angle right here. So in that little juncture right there, I'm just gonna cut it and push this back. And then after that, we can go ahead and fill that piece really easily. And this is exactly the same way. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here at a 90 degree angle to this edge right here. I'll just cut that straight down. Let's go ahead and mark that and do it. The reason why I am taking the time to actually mark this is just because um, it's gonna make it a lot easier to patch and, you know, basically to patch another piece into it 
is going to be a lot easier if it all matches the angles. And I'm just going to use this exacto knife to make my mark. Do the exact same thing here. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut this. Now, if you find that the piece is too long, then you're going to do this basically the same thing. You'll you'll measure how much too long it is, you know, compared to this piece here, and then you can make your line there, and then come in that same amount, and then you know remove those pieces, and then just slide this together, or this, or I guess both of them, uh, and then. They may not fit perfectly, but we're going to have some more shaping to do to this afterwards. So that won't be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and cut these. Okay, so now I have my pieces. Now when I cut this, I cut it on the forward side of the line. Um, you, know, you don't want to go right in the middle of the line because I drew the line right up against that edge. And I don't want to remove any of that edge right there. So. It's okay to lose a little bit of this part. So now the first thing I want to do is go ahead and glue these pieces you know, in position front to back. They're not going to match perfectly, but that is totally okay. That all has to do with the fact that this is going to end up being at an angle. Um, and just because they're different parts. For one thing, I spliced this one out of different parts to make that shape, so don't worry about it. So because it's going right here, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the bottom of this and the back of it. Yeah. This was kind of clogged up earlier, so I trimmed the tip off and I made the hole too big. And I didn't wear my gloves, so now I'm covered. So because of how hasty I was, I'm a little bit far back, but that's fine. Let's pick a different super glue. So once again, I'm going to do the bottom of this and the back of it. Clean up this spilled super glue. So I think I see some coming out, but I wasn't sure. Maybe I just ran out. It's always something. Okay, we're back to this treacherous. This time I'm going to be more careful about making sure it's lined up. And let's hold that in place for a little few seconds. I'm going to take some sandpaper and remove the uh, super glue from my fingers. Well, I can at least move my fingers around the way they should work now. <laughs> you know, a few videos back, someone had told me in the comments section that uh, you could take uh, super glue off with maybe it was peppermint oil or something. I can't remember. I've looked that up. Also, saw that there was some sort of uh, new. Um, super glue solvent or debonder or something uh, on the market, but I don't really know anything about it. 
But now that we have this together, let's go ahead and measure what our gap is. You can use just a regular, uh, you know, ruler, but we're just fine. It says that it is just over a quarter, it looks like. 1764ths. Either way, I'm just going to lock that in place. And I'm just going to mark that on here. And this piece is exactly a quarter. Okay, so um, now that I have this marked on here, I can just go cut that little square out real quick. Okay, so just cut that little piece out. That'll almost fit just from friction. Take a little piece of sandpaper here. I want it to be fairly snug, so I don't want to take too much off. But I also want to be able to slide that in there without fighting it. I'll figure out which side fits the easiest. That is pretty simple. I'm going to take my new little super glue. Okay, that seems to fit pretty well. Now, I'm not worried about this paper at all because we're about to take care of that. Because the next step, okay, let me go back just a bit. If you really wanted to and you didn't want to take the time if you were in a hurry, you could just fill that in with uh, putty as well, like I did all this other stuff. So if you're getting a you know, if you're like, I do not have time for this, just glue those on and, you know, putty that in there. Of course, then you have to wait for the putty to dry, so. You know, it's always something. So the next step, now this, even if, if uh, you know, hopefully for you, this piece will just fit on there reasonably perfect, you know about the way it is now. I mean, it's not perfect actually, but it's pretty good. The next step is to go ahead and sand this so that it's a continuation of this angle here. And that's going to take care of the paper. See if something a bit more aggressive works any better. Try not to get too much of an angle on there. You don't want to, you know, make this too much of an angle. You're just trying to continue on the angle that's here. This will just take a couple of seconds. I'll be back in a minute. So I clearly just continued on with this until I got to this stage. I definitely did not just run over to the belt sander and knock this off real quick, no matter what these little lines might say. Okay, that's looking pretty smooth. And that's basically just so that we can go ahead and add this piece on beside it. 
Um, now, clearly, once again, because if it's on a line here, we're going to have a little space there, but that's okay. We can fill in just a little bit there with uh, some putty, and when we sand all this rounded, it'll all be gone. So I think maybe I'm going to do the front half of this first. Okay, now I'm really confused because I used the exact same piece of artwork for the top of this piece as I did this piece. Oh, that's why. Because that only goes to there. Okay. Whew. Losing my mind. Okay, so if you look here, my piece is too long in the front, so I'll have to deal with that. Um, so I, I really want to make sure that I'm lining this up with these edges here. And I'll go ahead and fix this in the uh, template as well. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go just glue this onto here. You know, this is going to take a fair amount of glue, so I'm actually going to use that suicide bottle. You want to make sure you get the top because that's where you are going to want to make sure that that's all one secure piece. Oh, I shouldn't have done the back. Uh, it's one of those days. It's also very hot and the super glue is curing really fast. Which is making aligning stuff up difficult. Okay, so I'm going to hold this for a few seconds. And I clean up any super glue that's dripping. Yeah, that glue set up so fast that it actually is kind of holding this away a little bit, but I think it's still going to be okay. I mean, it's definitely going to be okay, but it may cause us a little bit of problem later on, but it won't be that bad. I'm going to use this to see if I can't just kind of remove some of this super glue. Sometimes the proper tool is actually called for. I just want to be gentle. I don't want to gouge the, the plastic. It's crazy how... I mean, it is very hot today. But that really, dry, really cured fast. Usually super glue is... You know, when you put two pieces together, it dries fast, but if it's just sitting out, it takes it a little while. Okay, I want to be careful with this because the more parallel I can make these, the easier it's going to be. In fact, it might be better to uh, hold this in place and take my measurement and then glue that piece in place before I glue the end on. So that was 5 sixteenths as long as it yeah, still seems to be pretty close to in place. So I'm going to cut a little strip of half inch thick. So I'll have to find my uh, two pieces that I glued together and cut a 5 sixteenths piece of this. Okay, so I managed to find uh, this piece, which is what I glued together earlier, and uh, found just barely enough of it that I was able to, to mark this strip. So I'll just cut this little piece out and glue it onto here. Okay, so now I have this piece. 
Which it looks like I've got a little bit of glue still at the top there that I need to remove. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this on. So we're gonna do the back and this front side. So ideally I'd like to move this stuff around to make sure that it was covering everything, but it is curing so quickly Like that, for some reason, it has never seen anything like this. Okay, so I'm going to use some of this spray just to get rid of any glue that hasn't cured. Now I'm going to try to pry this up. I didn't want to um, glue my chisel in place was the reason why I did that. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to fill that <laughs> with some putty and not worry about it. This is crazy. I'm not using that super glue anymore. <laughs> Let's go ahead and add this last piece on. It's a little bit more like it. Okay, so the next step is to just take some putty and fill in these gaps that I just made. I'm going to make some little thin bits of putty to see if I can really force it into that hole. Because I'm actually filling the, a fairly thin crack, I'm really pushing in and just trying to get almost like um, when you're grouting tile or something, you just really want to work it into the cracks. I do remember one thing. This, when I was doing this part in the original, was right after I got really, really frustrated the way it was looking, and I just kind of glued some stuff on it and started carving. It's hard to emphasize how much trouble this particular uh, build was to prototype to get the the first piece and try to you know trying to build the templates for it. Well, obviously, because I keep having to change them. Okay, so while I wait for this to dry, I'm going to go ahead and go work on changing the templates for these two pieces. Okay, the putty has dried up nice and uh, you'll be happy to know that all, finally all the super glue has uh, worn off my fingers. Um, so what we want to do now is, as you can see, this, where we've come on here now, is pitched up. So we need to go ahead and flatten that out. But I'm not too worried about making it perfect because after we flatten this out, we're going to go ahead and start rounding it over. But you got to start somewhere. In this case, I'm, where this piece was sticking up horribly, because of the super glue, I'm gonna go ahead and file that down flat as well.
overdid it here just a little bit, but that's okay because I'm going to round that off anyway. Also, I need to uh, shorten this bit where it overhung. I fixed all this on the uh, template, so you won't have to worry about that. Also, I'm gonna have to uh, reshape this front part so that it'll match the, this piece here. Once again, I fixed all that. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to flattening this off. Like I said, there's no need to try to make all this stuff perfect, just, you know, because we're, we're going to actually round this whole thing off, so we're just trying to remove some material. And you can definitely do this whole thing with or a file, um, but seeing as this is a very long video already, I'm going to introduce you to a different tool. This is a finger sander. Um, this one's uh, a Proxon. It's a little pricey. You can find ones that work quite well for much less money. Um, I really kind of like this one. Not huge fan of the way it sounds when I'm using it but um, it's it's very well made um, but I've, I, you can see these for $30 um, online not the Proxons but other variants uh, variations of this if you have um, compressed air you can get pneumatic versions that are much much cheaper that are very good quality and much smaller and easier to deal with but Unfortunately, my air compressor doesn't have a lot of volume, so uh, tools that take a, a constant flow of air, like uh, you know, sanders, things like that, basically the compressor just runs constantly. It's really annoying. That's why I opted for the electric version. But uh, they're very good for this kind of stuff. And of course, if you're removing a lot of material quickly um, and producing a lot of dust, you're definitely going to want to wear some uh, some breathing protection. And of course, you could also use a Dremel on that. Um, I think probably uh, on the previous one, this was a little quicker going with the file because I think it was uh, made of basswood and a little balsa wood in there and it, it uh, carved really easily. So that's definitely uh, one advantage, I think, to going the wood route, especially if you're using, now if, you're, if you're going with quarter inch thick alder, it's gonna be a little bit, I'm uh, not alder, uh, poplar it's going to be a little bit harder going but if you're using like the basswood you obviously won't be as strong but it will you know uh, sand and carve a lot easier as you can see I'm not trying to be real precise here like I've said that several times but it's reasonably flat across here and now what I want to do is how do I want to do this Probably the thing to do now is I want to maybe we keep some of the thickness here, but we want to go ahead and file this whole side down to where it's a lot closer to the edge here up front. We don't want a lot of material here on the on the front end. So see, where's my ruler? And once again, this is not a super precise thing I'm just going to mark a line but it's not um, it's gonna be a very general guide
doesn't have to be straight. In fact, I've probably got a little bit of a curve on this, which is, so I'm coming down to about half, like an eighth of an inch of material here on the, on the very front. And this is gonna be pretty slow going with files, um, but you can definitely do it that way. Um, also, the other tools you can use, something that's a bit more aggressive, but you're not gonna tear big chunks out. Something like a, a micro plane rasp. And I'm just not, as, not that familiar with uh, trying to, to work with the central like this. Um, with wood, this would be no problem at all. We're going to find out how it works. Uh, we're going to find out how well it works with the central. working fairly well so that's you want to take it all the way to the line like that because once you get a little bit closer you're going to want to switch over to a little finer tool um, but that seems to be working pretty well you're in for a little bit of time but we just need to to carve this in like that um, I'm going to run over to the belt sander real quick and just kind of zip that off okay I decided that if I'm going to uh, cheat and use power tool I might as well uh, at least let you watch Sorry about that. So I'm just kind of rocking this back and forth so I'll get a curved surface on here. So I might as well go ahead and uh, clean off this edge here. I really can't do that here on the belt sander, but I can make sure that all of my curves here are good and that everything's, you know, all together through here. Yeah, so the, the radius right along here is just a little bit too large to deal with this, so we do it by hand. So now we're back over here. We've got this taken care of, and now we just want to go ahead and round this off so that there's a transition that just kind of, you know, you don't want to round off the original part you want that to stay pretty straight, but from there on, you want it to kind of curve down. I'm just going to show you this as a sample. So you want to keep these sharp areas here. We'll go ahead and curve them down. We'll go ahead and, and actually cut these in shortly after. We're just going to do like a, a general rounding over.
This is usually much easier if you're sitting with this in your lap. When I did this originally, I just remember getting really frustrated about the way it was looking and I just took a file and spent about an hour just going to town on it. When I say file, it was more like, you know, a rasp and a knife and, you know, Dremel tool and everything you can think of. Let's speed things up a little bit. And before you uh, start to think I can't do this because I don't have a finger sander, I did the first one with just files and uh, the Dremel tool. So um, I didn't have this piece yet or this uh, tool yet. So we've got a decent curve now. But we still have way too much material. We need to thin this out quite a bit. Um, I don't want to get too close to this edge just yet. Um, because when I do that, I want to actually cut those little reliefs in to come down. But we've just got a, we've got a lot of a lot of meat here that we need to thin down. And that's a lot of dust, so I'm going to put my mask back on. And I'm going to turn the fan on because it's getting hot out here. Some more dust okay so now I've as you can see I've actually removed quite a bit of material here I'm up to the top there's barely any of that uh, that sort of we have the original quarter inch thick piece and then we have the first quarter inch piece of the uh, the half inch that we added on and then there's just not that much of that especially at the top here um, left maybe uh, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch in there. So I've got plenty of that been, rem I've removed plenty of that. Um, let's go ahead and you hopefully won't have to deal with this, but let me go ahead and real quickly remove this so that they uh, line up. Unfortunately, there is no way to just lay this down where it's uh, nice and solid anywhere because nothing is symmetrical on this whole thing so it just rolls and rocks everywhere you know this is a good good time to use the dremel To 
again, go ahead and round off all these sharp edges. I'm just trying to make sure everything is nice and smooth all the way down. I'll have to fill in that gap a little bit, a little later. And you could uh, definitely use the Dremel for a, a lot of this stuff right here too. You can carve a lot of material with this pretty quickly. Just make sure to always go with the rotation so that the, the rotation is kind of pulling you along. If you go against it, it's going to start digging in and you're never going to get a smooth surface. By the way, uh, when you're working with this Sintra, uh, Sintra is a foam PVC and uh, that means that if it gets hot it'll start to release uh, chlorine gas which is toxic so um, anytime you're working with power tools as far as like grinding and things on pvc if you get to that point where instead of uh, filing it or grinding it it starts to melt it you need to be wearing a respirator or be outside somewhere where there's a lot of uh, open air uh, because you don't want to be breathing in a lot of uh, chlorine gas while you're working on uh, Sintra. I haven't seen anything happen here, but that's always a possibility when you're uh, grinding, especially if you have too fine a belt or something when you're grinding on it or sanding it. Uh, you can start to melt the, the PVC as opposed to uh, you know taking little bits of it out. Okay, at this point, I want to concentrate on the top edges of these straight parts here. And I want to try to take the, the curve right up against the original edge for the piece. Don't worry about trying to get the, uh, the riser parts, you know, these little angle parts here. Um, just concentrate on taking the edge um, taking this curve all the way to that edge on the front edge here on the on the flat top parts yeah, easy for me to say and try to do it without damaging the rest of the piece too much which is going to be challenging at least if I want you to see it this is all much easier if you've got this in your in your lap I think the Dremel's probably going to come in handy here in a second. So we're getting there on that, but I want this to be, instead of right now it's coming out and down, I want it to be almost like a sharp edge and then immediately start the curve down. Maybe I can draw in here. So instead of this nice round curve from there, I want it to go like from here to like that. Instead of where it is right now, which is out here like that. Yes, I'm going against the uh, rotation and I'm trying to take off a lot of material and uh, just know that it, if any second it could dig in and then I've got a lot more work to do. I'm, I'm getting impatient is what's happening. It 
something about getting on camera, I suddenly get real impatient. Because that's much more the curve that I want right there. Let's go ahead and do the rest of this, uh, this one and this one as well. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the finger sander on those. If, uh, if you do get a finger sander and are doing this, um, the important thing is when you're going back and forth, you want to make sure that you always raise up the, uh, the belt sander or the, the finger sander. As you, if you're, I'm going to come toward us, I'm going to raise that edge up and then I'm going to raise the other edge up as I go backwards. Um, otherwise, it just gets really kind of grabby and tries to make little lines everywhere. And you don't want that. Just gonna flip this over so that the slack side of the belt can do some work. Uh, because it's not straight, uh, it can bend around that corner. It's really good for doing curves that way. For this uh, area up here, I just want to make a nice rounded edge there. It's not as important as far as how much of a rounded edge or it just needs to look like it blends in smoothly. We're definitely getting in there. I think from here on, I'm just going to take the hand files so get underneath here. Actually, pretty good. I'm a little bit feels like I'm a little wide. Maybe not. I'm also just kind of feeling to make sure everything's smooth and it's not doesn't feel like there's a you know a sharper curve here, a wider curve there. That kind of at first I thought it felt like there was maybe a little bit. And there might be this drops down more sharply, whereas this is more rounded right here at the end. If it is, it's pretty subtle, so I'm just going to gently do this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if we can't cut some of these little curves in as they drop down. They're kind of starting to form on their own just because we, you can kind of see it there, because we were just cutting in the rounded edges and not worrying about that at all. We kind of start to get that as it is. I just want to accentuate that. One of these uh, regular flat sided ones works pretty good because you can actually cut with the edge as well as the face of it. It's also a good time for these little files, especially this little square file. And it's hard to see with the multiple surfaces and it's, you know, once we paint this, it's going to be real obvious. And right now it's just getting a little bit hard to see unless you get the light just right. Um, and I'm just going to clean this up and to do that I really kind of need to get this in my lap with my head down over it where I can really see well. Um, it's just one of those bad things about getting older and bifocals just don't quite cut it. 
Um, so I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to have to go away from the camera because you won't be able to see anything but the back of my head. And uh, see if I can't clean that up just a little bit. Just with the little files. Okay, I'm hoping that I can get this on camera somewhat. Um, basically, in cutting this stuff in, I'm just kind of I'm all using this little file here. Well, I'm not only using this; I'm also using um, this Exacto knife. I've learned that. Um, Super glue is going to be the bane of my existence on this particular build because it's just enough harder than the uh, Sintra that it makes it really hard to remove because the Sintra wants to remove around it. So even when I sand it, it still ends up sticking up higher than the Sintra does. But it's just a matter of being careful. Um, but I'm mostly holding it like this. I don't know if, how you, you can see that. Um, and, you know, pushing down with my finger here. And then also coming in and cutting some of this edge in a little more. There's not an exact way for it to look. Just make sure that everything ties in together so that this angle runs all the way to the edge. And then from there drops down around the around the uh, around the edge. This one is the toughest, not only, or I should say primarily just because of all the things that are filled make it really hard to actually see the angle. You want to make sure that you're coming up to this original edge and not this edge right here. Um, we really want to get it all the way, push that curve all the way in so that this original piece is the only part that's really flat. And if all this is too much for you, I have seen versions that looked really good that didn't have this curve on it and were just sharp edged like it is on this side here and just sharp edged on that side and down at an angle. I think this will end up looking better, but I've seen some, some nice looking uh, uh, pieces that 
that didn't have this curved side. I know the original, um, some of this is based off of the original castings, which I did get some pictures of. And they originally did not have a curved side, but then if you look in the uh, still shots from the movie, it does have a curved side. So there was some evolution there. Um, I've also found that you want to go up and down this way. If you start going sideways, it's really easy to put uh, an edge in, and you don't want to do that. You definitely want to keep working this curve. So as much as you can, work up and down. When I do go this direction, I'm usually uh, using the, the file sideways. want to make sure that this is a a flat uh, a fairly sharp edge and a flat not uh, some kind of a curve there I want to emphasize that Also remember that this is Boba Fett's and if there is a, a little scratch or ding or something like that you can't really get rid of, don't worry about it. We'll just paint it to look like damage and it'll be great. aggressive piece here. The problem with this is I can't really get much movement without hitting that, but still. So they got a little bit bigger bite. The problem I've got here is I ended up with a little bit too much meat right back here at the back and I'm trying to get rid of that. I don't want it to be as, as small as this because I want there to be a transition right here where this little edge comes down. And I want it to be a little bit closer. Can you see this? I hope. Yeah, it's looking better. So now I can work on cutting this in a little bit better as a transition. For the most part, I'm just working right off of the little lines that were formed when we only curved here and here and here and didn't worry about trying to curve this part. It sort of naturally starts to form a little bit of a line there, and I'm just enhancing those lines. And that, when I say I'm cutting in, basically it's just a transition from up here to a little step down to there. Right in here, it's a little bit more of a ramp, and I want to make that a little bit sharper. It just helps it to look like it was stamped out of, uh, you know, a piece of steel or, I guess in this case, uh, Beskar, as opposed to, you know, uh, a more organic shape. I guess what I'm trying to say is it makes it look more because it's more stamped than carved. What I'm doing here is still working on that little cut in 
It's because I want this to be more straight and then down and then straight. Right now it's got kind of a bulged curve which makes it very smooth to morph in there. It's not ever going to be quite as sharp as these just because it's a much longer uh, bevel. What I'm doing now is I'm trying to bring this in shallower so that there's a bit more of a uh, variation between the height of this and the height of this. So by removing material here, it kind of goes in a little bit more before popping back out here. Yeah, we're starting to get what I'm looking for. Part of the problem I'm having here is the fact that because of all this filler being here, it's really hard to see that the real shape of the curve that I'm working on. Once that's painted, it's going to be real apparent. And it's possible that I'll end up priming this and then realizing that I need to go ahead and uh, file this some more. I'm pretty happy with that. I might take a little bit of putty and just make sure there's no way I can fill in any. I just want to make sure these lines are visible because of a change in color. The uh, outside color of the Sintra is a little different than the inside color, so you can get these little. It looks like there's a, a, a line, a crack that goes through there, and it's really just a line. But um, I think I'll take some putty just to make sure. That way, if there is any kind of a little indention there, we can take care of it. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so don't freak out. Um, all I did was I wanted to see how uh, how bad this area really was, if it really was as bad as it looked. Um, so I just hit it with a very thin coat of uh, filler primer. And it's not that bad. Um, there is a little bit of work that needs to be done right there. Um, but in general, it's, it's pretty smooth. Everything else looks pretty good. The only thing that I did, other than hit this with some filler primer, uh, that you didn't see was I rounded off this back edge right here, um, just with the file. Just because if you're wearing this, you know, this is the part that's gonna be jammed into your arm when you bend your elbow. So you don't want any kind of an edge on that. Um, this looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of uh, smoothing that could go on right there. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but a couple of those seams do show up. There's a good chance that just the filler primer is enough to fill those, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over everything with some fine sandpaper, about uh, 220 grit sandpaper. I might go up to 400, but at this point, I'm gonna be sticking. At this point, I'll just go over it with 220, uh, just to smooth everything off. But I think we're gonna have to stop here for this episode. Um, we're pretty much ready to start on with the other parts. Uh, you know, it's just a little bit of smoothing things out a little bit with sandpaper. If, if anything won't smooth out, I'll just uh, fill it with some putty 
and uh, keep doing that. But I don't see a lot more to do at this point, so um, I think we'll probably move on to the uh, flamethrower next. Hey, if you like this video or found it helpful, why not go ahead and give it a thumbs up? And of course, subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. You can also click that little bell so you'll be instantly notified when new videos come out. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. You know, it's really your likes, comments, and subscriptions that motivate me to keep this channel going. So until next time, thanks.